Okay, we are rolling. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bug Yoga. We're in the month of March 2024, and our focus is yoga for hips. So what I want you to think about today is the directions that the thigh bone moves. So basically the leg in the hip socket, and it's the socket is called the acetabulum. So the leg can move all directions and even circling, which is called circumduction. But it can also rotate when you're in those directions. So for instance, I can take my leg out into abduction, but while I'm out, I can also rotate my leg in and I can rotate my leg out. So it's still in abduction, but I'm rotating it as well. So we're going to focus a little bit on that today. Sometimes the range of motion is going to be teeny tiny. Just go to your comfortable range, but you will feel a little bit different activation in the muscles as we do this. So we are going to start standing, or you can sit in your chair and do this same work. You're likely going to need though uh, something to assist you with balance. <clears throat> and then have your yoga strap close by so that you can pick that up. So let's hold on to a support with probably your right hand. And then we're going to focus on the right leg. So let's just lift a straight leg forward. And there's a point where you can't lift it any higher without letting your tailbone tuck under. So hold it in that position. And we are just going to rotate the thigh outward and inward. You can have your foot flexed if you'd like, and you can kind of notice how far your foot can point each direction. But we're not focusing on turning the ankle. So the entire leg is stable. You can have a little bend in your knee if your hamstring is tight and your pelvis is really locked in solid, kind of like a little windshield wiper. Good. Now let's bring that foot back to the neutral. Circle your leg down and around and lift. This can be any size. Now when we come this direction across the leg, we're activating our inner thigh adductor. The opposing side, the IT band area, medial glute, is getting a little bit of a stretch. Let's pause and reverse our circle. Good. Really good posture here. Shoulders are back. We're always standing tall and strong, focusing on our balance and our alignment of the spine. Do you feel your quadricep working a little bit? I do. Let's circle it one more time around this direction and then relax the foot down. Good, all right, let's do the same warm up on the other side. You can support with the same hand or you can turn around, use the opposite hand. We'll lift the other leg up a comfortable height without letting your tailbone tuck under. So keep your pelvis neutral, rotate your leg out and then in. Ooh, so I feel like I'm getting some arthritis in this hip. So I can notice the difference between the other side when I go this way. My foot is not turning in as much. It's not hurting. It's just the range of motion isn't there. So I'm going to take it kind of to that edge and say, okay, that's good. And make it feel comfortable. Let's go out and in twice more. Rotate and in once more. Back to neutral. Let's lower down, out, and around. So I'm trying to cross the midline if possible because that's when I get that inner thigh connection and I stretch the IT band just a little bit. Good, two more this direction. I feel some work in the standing leg hip and then we'll reverse across and around. I like to put a hand on the hip then I can feel some feedback of whether or not 
I'm letting my pelvis go with the legs. So I want to keep that entirely stable. Feeling the quad working. That's the rectus femoris muscle and the iliopsoas. It's lifting the leg up. We'll come around one more time. And then relax. Great. All right. You may want to sit in a chair as we do a standing balance. If you don't feel comfortable enough to stand up for this, then have a seat in your chair. So what we're going to do is take our yoga strap, place it under the bottom of the right foot, and then hold on to both ends. And I'm going to use my chair for balance here. And then we're just going to lift this leg up to whatever height feels comfortable for you and use the arm to bring the leg across and back to center. So we're not going to go out to the side. We're just going across and center. Now, if your hamstring is pretty tight, you can be down here, go across and center. Sitting in a chair is wonderful, but of course, then you won't get that extra option for balance. <clears throat> and across. Center. Now let's hold it across and then turn your shoulders the opposite direction as much as possible and look over your right shoulder. Let's hold here and breathe. This is a tough balance pose if we let go, but you can give it a try for a second or two. If it's too hard to balance, then turn your head back to the front. One more breath. Come back to the midline and lower the leg. Great. All right, let's do the other side. So we'll take the left foot. I'm just going to bring my hand to the wall here. So I'm going to have to move my chair. And let's bring this leg up, comfortable height. I'm going to cinch up on that strap just a little bit. Now again, if we lift our leg too high, then our tailbone's gonna curve under. So lower it if you feel like your pelvis is moving. We're gonna take it across and just back to neutral. Across, you're feeling that stretch in the outside of the hip, that IT band. Maybe a little bit of a pause as you pull it across, pause, stretch and release. Shoulders back. Chin is level with the earth. Okay, let's bring it across and hold it. Then try to turn your shoulders the opposite direction. So we're twisting our spine now, looking over the left shoulder. Your standing leg is straight, but not locked out. You want to have a little softness in that leg. One more breath. And bring it back to the neutral line and lower it down. Great. All right. Set your strap off to the side a bit. I'm going to have my chair turned with the seat up toward the top of my mat in case I need to use the chair for support. You can also have a block here at the top of your mat as well. And then we are going to step the right foot forward. The left foot is back about a foot and a half or so and you've got a little turnout of the foot. Then we're going to bend the front knee and this is just a baby warrior one. We'll hinge from the hips. And with a nice neutral spine, we can place the hands to the top of the chair. Or if you want to go lower down to a block, you can as well. And then take your right arm, rotate it up, and slowly straighten out your front leg. So we have a nice twist here. Softness in the front knee. This hand can also go to the hip or wrapped behind your back. Take your gaze up to the ceiling and breathe. 
So this using the chair is going to be your option one level as we move and advance this a little bit more. So give yourself permission to stay here. Let's come out of the twist. And then we'll keep the front leg straight, slightly bend the back knee, pull the toes up of the front leg and sink down into a little bit of a hamstring release. Good. Now we can stretch this IT band a little bit more if we actually take this front leg and slightly move it over to the left side of our mat. So I'm going to pick it up and bring it across a little bit. Now you're going to feel it a little bit more in the outside of the hip. You can turn your toes in on that right foot and feel that a little bit more. One more breath here. And then however you want to come out of this pose, you can move the leg back to center, re-bend the front knee, and stand back up. And then we'll switch feet. So the left foot is in front, the right foot's back about a foot and a half. A little bit of a turnout. We'll start with the front knee bent. Our hips are squared forward. We're in this baby warrior one pose. Right from the hips, we'll hinge forward to support our body on the back of the chair or seat of the chair. You can use the back of the chair as well. Then we'll turn to the left this time and start to straighten out the front leg. And it's up to you how straight that you'll get it, but the straighter you do, the more you're going to feel it in the outside of the hip. Let's take our gaze up to the ceiling if possible and try to use your core to support you here. So I don't want you to just take all of your upper body weight into your right wrist. I want you to use your abs where you could almost pick your hand up off the chair or just tent your fingertips. Okay, let's come out of the twist, bringing the hands back down. Now we will bend the back knee and pull the toes up of the front leg. So you might have to come up here a little higher for this if the hamstrings are tight. That's okay. And then we can move this foot over to the right side, just maybe about three or four inches. We're just gonna bring it across a little, but try not to turn your body with it. It's just that your leg alone is across the midline. And you can turn your ankle in or your toes in. Ooh, that gets that peroneus longus and anterior tibialis muscle, at least for me. Okay, and then come out the way that you feel comfortable. We can bring the foot back to the middle, re-bend the knee, stand up, and step forward. Okay, I'm gonna bring a little padding for my knees. We are going to repeat this sequence. You can do it the exact same way. And I will give you those verbal cues, or you can take this lower down onto the mat and maybe use your block for support. So now our right foot will still be in front, but we're going to take a really big step way back with the left foot into a nice long lunge here. So for using our block for support, I'm going to put that underneath my left hand. And then we're just going to try turning this open into a twist. Now, if you want to stay here with this knee bent, this is a beautiful pose. But we're working today on stretching the IT band. So your next option would be to start to straighten out your front leg as you're in this modified revolved triangle. So you should feel this running down the IT band and across the hip, depending on how tight you are in that area. Good, and you know your options with this hand if this bothers you to keep it lifted. One more breath. Exhale, come down. Now we're gonna bend the back knee 
and I'm going to place it on my blanket because that's my surgical knee. And then we'll do the same stretch we just did standing up, hands on the chair, but we're doing that kneeling. Block is a good tool to hold yourself up here. And then we can take that option again to bring this foot just a little bit to the left across the midline and sink down. So now my chest is a little bit more directly over the leg rather than the leg being outside in alignment with my right hip. Good. We can also turn our toes in. So this is going to rotate that tibia a little bit, maybe even up into the thigh bone. Let's take a couple more breaths here. Good. And then we're going to come back to a stand if possible, or you can just stay on your knees. So I'm going to come out the way I came by lifting up the back knee off the floor. I'm going to use my chair for support. Step the back foot forward and come on up. Good. I'll give you a second. Okay. Again, using the chair, absolutely fine. Or we're going to step that right foot way back behind us. Big, long step back. So we want this knee directly over the ankle. We want to have a nice stretch here. I'm going to put the block under my right hand. And then let's try opening out to the left. You can keep the left knee bent or to target that IT band, start to slowly straighten that leg out. And very true, this is a pretty advanced pose. So if you're saying, gosh, I just can't get there today, that's what the chair's for. That first option, I want you to take it and not try to struggle through the second option. And breathe. Always, if you need to come out of these poses sooner, let your body be your guide. All right, let's come out of the twist. And then our back knee will bend and drop down if you want onto a little cushion. We'll keep that front leg straight as we come into our hamstring stretch. Nice. Now I see this done a lot of different ways. Some people like to sit all the way back onto their heel. With my knee arthritis, that doesn't feel great for me. Some people like to slide this into a split, but I just want you to do what feels really good for your hamstring. And then if you want, we can bring this leg a little bit across the midline. I'm going to use my hand to pick it up and bring it across. And now it's kind of underneath my mid chest toward the right shoulder. I can even put my block on the other side. Oh boy, turn your left toes in. Yowza, really feeling this one. Good, couple more breaths. Nice job. Okay, I'm going to stay on our knees. So if you're using the chair right now, then I want you to come down and join me on all fours. Now, since we're really kind of focusing on that IT band and crossing the midline, I want you to make sure you've got a little bit of room to your left side. So I'm going to walk out a little bit more to the edge of my mat. Take your right leg straight back. Turn your toes down so your thigh bone is neutral in the hip socket. And then without moving anything but your thigh bone, turn your toes out and turn your toes in. So it's kind of hard to do this without moving your pelvis or without just focusing on your ankle or your foot. So it's the thigh bone that's rotating. <clears throat> your head is looking directly down towards the top of your fingertips to keep that neutral head position. 
And let's do one more. If your wrists are bothering you, you can make fists for wrists or use dumbbells. Now bring your foot back to parallel so your toes are directly down. Look over your left shoulder and pull the leg across to your left and see if you can see your foot. And then come back to neutral. So we're not going out to the right side. We're just coming across and back in. Now, if you really want to challenge your balance in your core, you can do this in spinal balance with your right arm or left arm reaching forward. Holding it there, we'll bring the foot across and back to center. That is challenging. Across and center. Let's get three more. And the left side of your waist is shortening as you bring the leg across. So it's okay to move your pelvis slightly or your waistline. One more time. And bring that leg out. Now this next one might be a little bit difficult. Before we do it, I just want you to put your foot down with your toes tucked under. And my block is in the way a little bit there. Give yourself a little bit of a calf stretch. So I'm pushing into my heel. While you're doing this, I want you to take your left foot and bring it over to the right hand side of your mat. So I just picked up my leg a little bit and swiveled it. So my left foot's to the right side of my mat. So the thigh is slightly rotated. Then we are going to take the right knee and just tuck it behind the left and open your right foot out to the left side of your mat. This is cow face. So you might say, oh, man, this is all I can do. I'm just going to stay right here. Or if you're not feeling too much of a stretch, you can start to back your hands up and sit back. You might even sit on your block. Whoop. So Lisa hasn't tried this yet with the surgical knee. So we'll see how I do. All right. Using a lot of support here. Okay, those of you with really flexible hips, you're probably going to be able to sit all the way down onto the floor in cow face. But for me, this is this is pretty good. Now, if you got here and your body is saying, nope, then I want you to go back and put your hands down onto the mat and just support yourself here. Okay, so how we come out of this now, we'll both, will everybody bring their hands back down. The right knee unfolds, and then the left knee comes back to neutral, and we just bring the right knee back in. Now we're on our hands and knees again. If you need a break for the wrists, roll them out a little bit as we try this sequence on the other side. So now our left leg goes straight back. We're gonna try to keep it straight and then turn your leg out and in, right from the hip socket, the acetabulum rotating that thigh bone. Make sure you're not letting your back sag so you have a really good core control. And you can certainly do this one with your right arm off the floor. I have a feeling some of you are doing that already. One more each direction. And then bring your leg back to neutral. Foot is flexed and we're just coming across the midline. So pull your leg over to the right and look over your shoulder. I gotta kick my block out of the way. Look for that foot and then just bring it back to neutral. Exhale, look. Inhale, line it up. Exhale, look. You want to try it with your right arm off the floor. Ooh, really tough. Let's get three more. 
Oop. And two. Good, one more, bring it across. Come back to neutral. Okay, tuck the left toes under, push into your heels. So you're getting a little stretch there. And while you're holding that, you're going to lift your right knee up and turn your right ankle over to the left side of your mat. And then the left knee is going to sandwich right behind the right knee and the left ankle will go out to the right. So your feet are on opposite sides of your mat. And then notice, do you wanna just stay like this? This is good. Or walk it back a little bit, check in. I don't want any pain in your knees at all. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna find a block I can reach. Okay, let's give it a shot. Wow, I'm a little bit impressed with my knee replacement at the moment. So that's good. I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back. Sometimes I don't try things and then I'm with you guys and I want to teach something. So I say, Ooh, I might have to demonstrate this and then think, Oh, wow. I just did that thing. That's really good. Uh, but at the same time, if we can't, we go, that's okay. I have another option. Okay. Let's come back to our hands and knees. So your left leg will unfold back first and it comes into alignment. Then your right leg does and you are back in all fours, hands and knees. Now, if you need to come back up on your feet, we're going to be doing a down dog. You can use your chair to support your arms. Let's tuck our toes under, lift the hips up, drop the heels down and get a nice stretch. Lengthen the back of the legs. Try to lift your tailbone up a little bit. Take a few breaths. If you look right or left, you should be looking underneath your armpits. Now we did a pose where we were standing and doing it with balance, or you had the option of sitting in your chair. We're gonna go back and revisit that pose again seated in some way. So either seated in your chair or you can come down and sit on your mat. So take your time. Up in the chair is great. On the mat is great. <clears throat> and you are going to need your yoga strap. So let's focus on the right leg into that IT band. The left leg can either straighten out or you can kind of tuck it underneath you. Now this leg for me, and my hip isn't very flexible and my knee has a lot of arthritis. So on this leg, I'm gonna actually support a block underneath there. Oh, that feels great. So you can support. So this is the leg we're gonna be working on. Let's take our yoga strap. And then let's see, we'll be using our left hand to hold onto the strap. We're going to lift that leg up and pull it across as far as we can. The shoulders turn to the right. Right hand can be behind us. And let's hold this stretch. Now, if you're pretty flexible and you don't need your yoga strap, you can actually place your hand on the outside of your foot and you can pull it across this way. The top or the right arm can reach behind you. I'm really close to my wall, so I'm not demonstrating my maximum twist, but I want you to look way behind your body. What happens if your knee is bent? Is this okay? Well, yeah, it's fine. You just might not get as much of a stretch in that IT band, but it's not a bad pose. It's not going to hurt or injure you. It just has a different a different benefit. So go with it, whatever you can do and sitting in the chair is great. All right, let's bring that leg back to the midline. You can rebend your knee and release it. Same stretch on the other side. So your left leg is going to be in front. 
We can extend the right one straight, or we can tuck it under. We can use a little, see how much different this side is? That one just goes, whoop, the other one, hmm, not so much. Okay, that's just things that we think about with our body and we accommodate for. Okay, so the strap's gonna be in your right hand. We'll lift that left leg up, sit tall, pull it across the midline, turn your shoulders to the left, hand can be down or reach out behind you. And without the yoga strap, you're just gonna put your hand on top of your foot and lace your fingers around the outside edge, pull it across. Now you might play with this in terms of how high or how low your leg is to get a better stretch here. Or even how much you twist, that's gonna help you get more stretch. Couple more breaths. And then bring it back to the center. Whoop, oh no, this happened again. Darn it, okay, I lost my camera. So I'm gonna go back to my other device here. All righty. This is the third time this has happened and I don't get what's going on with, uh, with this. I can't see myself. Let's see, there I am there. So I'm gonna teach back from my other device. When this happened before, the recording kept going. So I'm gonna continue to talk in this microphone because I think it's gonna go ahead and record the um, audio from my other device. So we just finished that second IT band stretch. So I want you to sit in butterfly pose. And I'm gonna see if I can bring my computer down here. Yeah, it's not gonna be a good, a good situation, but we're gonna sit in butterfly. And let those knees open out. Boy, you can see how different my flexibility is here. It's crazy. Okay, lengthen your spine and breathe. And I want your legs to feel really heavy. Just let them sink open as much as possible. Allow your shoulders to be level. And then if you can hinge forward any amount, let's give that a try. So not rounding your back and hunching, but keeping your spine long, just hinge forward a little bit. Maybe I can scoot back here a little further. <laughs> I'm in the guest bedroom. <laughs> We're gonna make this work. Yes, we are. Good. All right, let's add a twist to our butterfly pose. If this isn't comfortable, sit in a chair, sit cross leg. And then let's see. I think I have to reverse my directions. I want you to take your right hand, reach it across to your left knee and twist. Look over that shoulder. Now slightly push your knee into your hand like you were gonna try to open that leg a little bit. So now we're working on a little bit of strengthening for that external rotation of the hip. Just a nice natural breath in and out through the nose. All right, let's come back through the midline. Pause there for a moment. Just notice what you're feeling in your hips. Sit tall again, reach the opposite hand across. And I'm trying to grab the outside of my knee a little bit and then rotate and look over the shoulder. Once you get into your twist, I want you to push your knee outward, like you're gonna drive it down to the floor, but you're keeping, you're preventing that with your hand. 
So feel a little work in the outside of your hip. Nice range of motion for your neck as well. One more breath. And then we'll come out of the twist, releasing that tension. Pause. And then I want you to notice how close to your groin are your heels. So take a look and see. You might have them pulled in really tight. Mine are a fair amount away because of the bend of my knees. And I want you to push your heels away from you a little bit to try to straighten your legs a tiny bit more. So now you have more of a diamond shape. Sit tall and let your belly just drop forward into that stretch. So for me, this feels so much different than when my feet are in close. I have more room to go down. Um, physiologically, I'm not sure why that is, but it, this, this feels like I have a little bit more range of motion here. And it feels like a nice stretch through my lower back. Let's take a couple more breaths here as well. With each exhalation, try to sink down. And then bring it back up. Close the legs together. And then extend them straight forward into our forward fold. Now, I didn't bring my strap with me back from the other room, but I want you to go ahead and place your strap under the bottoms of your feet and flex your ankles up. So this might be a really good stretch for you right here and you wanna stay with that, that's great. Otherwise, we're going to move with our breath. So as we're sitting tall, we'll inhale and then we'll exhale to find a little bit of range of motion. Then inhale a little bit, not all the way up. Exhale, try to find a little more. Inhale a little bit. Exhale a little. And again, two more times. One more. And then I want you to find your edge and hold. And just keep really aware of what you're feeling as you're holding. If you're feeling any pain, of course, back off. If you're feeling any shaking of your muscles, you're going to retreat from that just a little bit. Just a nice deep stretch. And then we'll come back up with a nice big breath in and exhale. We'll do the same thing with just the right leg straight. So I'm gonna fold my left leg in. So it's kind of like we're in a seated tree pose, but my chest is still going to be over the extended leg. So we'll inhale with the tall spine, using your strap if you need, exhale and reach any amount. Bring it back up. Inhale. Exhale. Just two more this time. And one more. Find your edge and hold. Now we're going to add a little bit of a twist to the right. So I'm going to hold on to my right foot with my left hand and then turn out to the right side. You might be up here with your strap and just turning. This is very similar to the poses we did earlier. We're getting that rotation of the spine, stretching of the hamstring and a little bit of the IT band. I'm going to allow you to explore this for a few more breaths. 
Remember, your right arm doesn't have to be up in the air if it's bothering the shoulder. It's just an accessory to the pose, so place it wherever you feel comfortable. Maybe you can go a little deeper. Two more breaths. Then we'll stay in the fold, but come out of the twist. So start to turn your body to face your leg again. And then bring yourself back up. Nice. Okay, let's switch the legs. Left leg lengthens. The right one comes in. The foot is toward the inner thigh. We're going to let that knee open out. Tuck in the bed covers here. Okay, here we go for four breaths. Inhale, exhale, reach. Wow, the difference on this side is really something. On this side for me, it's all about my right hip, not about my left hamstring. Two more. Good, one more, breathe in. Breathe out, hold, either with your yoga strap or without. We're going to turn away from this leg and twist. Good job. Just going to give you a few seconds to explore this. Keep the breath moving. Maybe sink a little lower or twist a little deeper. Two more breaths. And we'll come back to the midline and hold. Then rise up. Okay, you're going to come down onto your backs with your yoga strap as we stretch the IT band from a reclined position. So come all the way down. Now, if you have some back issues, you can bend your left knee, set your foot on the floor. Um, otherwise, I want you to try to straighten out both legs on your mat. We're going to bring the right leg up and put it, put your yoga strap under the bottom of your foot and extend your right leg up to the ceiling as closely as you can to stretch your hamstring. So you're on your back, I'm sitting up. And then without twisting, you're just gonna bring this leg across a little bit. And then as it's across, turn your foot inward. So you're rotating your tibia, your ankle, your tibia, and your thigh in as your leg is slightly across the midline. You're not twisting, so I want both of your shoulders to stay flat, and I want your hips to stay flat on the mat. Okay, if you can stay here and hang, we're gonna be here one minute starting now. Good, and the straighter your leg can be, the better you're gonna feel this in the IT band. So if you've got to lower your leg down a little bit to get it straight, do that. And try, I know the leg is working, but try to soften it and let the yoga strap support you. So in other words, you're not really tightening all these muscles just to keep your leg up. Allow it to relax. We have 20 seconds. Slow equal ratio breaths. Five, four, three, two. Come back to the midline and then we can bend the knee. You can release the yoga strap. Now this time you're going to get to twist. So on your back, bring that knee across and then rotate and look over your opposite shoulder. 
So in a nice reclined twist, your arms can be out. You can be pulling that knee across gently, or you can relax it on a block. Just let any tension melt away from your spine and of your right hip. All right, one more breath here. And then come back to neutral out of that twist and extend the right leg all the way down. So on your back, if you want, you can reach your arms up, give yourself a big stretch, or hug your knees into your chest if you're feeling any stress in your lower back. And then we'll do the other side. So let's bring our left leg up, loop the strap under the bottom of the foot, and start to elevate that leg to your range of motion. Okay, without twisting or moving your pelvis, We'll bring that leg across the midline and turn your foot in. No twist. I'm gonna try, trying to demonstrate this sitting up without doing anything that's going to be misleading here. All right, holding one minute. Could be an entirely different feel on this side. Sometimes I find it as feeling a little bit burny, burning sensation. Our IT band is not a muscle. It's a really uh, thick kind of tendon, connective tissue. So we're not as much stretching it as we are the muscle that's attached to it. 30 seconds. Couple more breaths. And then we'll bring that leg back to the midline. Bend the knee. You can get rid of the yoga strap. So your knee is up toward your chest, laying on your back. You're going to pull that knee across into a nice twist, laying on the floor. And then look toward the left side. So your left knee is pointing to the right, your chin is pointing to the left. We're in that spiral twist. I'm gonna have to troubleshoot what's going on with Jitsi here. Um, maybe I just need to restart my computer. There might be just a glitch in my computer because I, I don't know, this is the third time it's happened. So something's going on that's out of the ordinary. Couple more breaths here in your twist. And then let's bring it back to neutral. Unfold the leg if that feels comfortable. Give yourself a nice full body stretch laying on your back. And then remember cow face that we did when we were on our knees. We're going to do that on our back. So what I want you to do is you're laying on your back and you are going to bring your right knee and cross it above your left. And then when you lift your feet up, see my right leg is over to the left side. My left leg is over to the right. And then you're going to reach and try to grab some part of your legs or your feet or your ankles. Now, maybe you can lay your head back and get comfortable here. Or maybe you can't get your left foot, but you can get your right. So whatever you can get, hold that cow face position. Now, if this is really out of the ordinary, cross at your ankles instead of crossing above your knees. If you're really not able to do this, almost like you're doing uh, easy seated pose on your back. Crisscross applesauce. Okay. 
and you can kind of adjust where your feet are in space to try to get more of a stretch here. Maybe you're pulling them down toward your glutes a little more. One more breath with this leg, with this side. And then release those ankles. Uncross, set both feet back down to the mat. And then we'll do the other side. So your left leg goes over your right. You're crossing at the thighs above the knee. When you lift your legs up, your right foot's over toward the left. Your left foot's over to the right. We're going to try to reach up and find something we can grasp. You could even use your yoga strap if you can get one side but not the other. You can loop your yoga strap around that foot that you can't quite get a hold of. And let's just stay there and breathe. Noticing your hips, being mindful of your knees. Modifying if you're feeling any pain. A couple more breaths here. And then release those feet. Let them lower down to the floor, uncross your knees. Then keep your knees tight together, but walk your feet away from each other. So it's like you're making a little tent with your knees. And I want you to stay like that on your back with your knees touching and your feet wide. Now this you might feel, I don't feel really a stretch here, Lisa, but it is just releasing the outside of the hips a little bit. And then what we're going to do is slightly lift the hips up into a baby bridge. So we're on our backs, we have our feet wide, our knees touching, and we're just going to keep our arms by our side and lift the hips up into a little bridge and then lower down. Let's do five reps. Hips come up and hips lower. You exhale as the hips come up. Inhale to lower. And again, and now let's lift up and hold just a few seconds. And then slowly lower those hips down. All right, now bring your feet close together and let your knees open. You're on your back, even though I'm sitting up, we're doing reclined Baddha Konasana, Supta Baddha Konasana. Just let your knees open and relax. Eyes can be closed, focusing on the breath, focusing on your hips, focusing on your practice today. If you need a little extra time in meditation relaxation, you can remain as you are. Or just start to add in any extra movement that would feel good or any small stretches for your hips that you feel like your body's needing.